Hi, I'm Rob and this is Gems of War. This is the Black Heart, an extra faction rewards in this event. Now I'm going to show a couple of different teams and a few different ways to go about this because it does vary upon little things like whether you decide to pick up the tier 1 from the shop. If you do this, this is totally recommended in my opinion. You get the Potion of Enchantment which is really really cool. Basically all your troops are going to be going to start enchanted at the start of every single battle for the entirety of all the delves you do in this event which is really handy it does make things a quite a bit faster and is well worth the 30 gems because you do pick up extra faction assault sigils extra chaos shards and more besides there is an extra weapon available on the tier 4 black hearts horn this deals true damage to the last enemy with a six percent chance to slay them boosted by six percent for each doom skull it's not the kind of weapon I would use in this um, delve but it's certainly worth picking up because if you're going to get to tier 4 anyway and pick those uh, extra bits up then you, it's effectively free so why not right on to the actual thing itself i've done the first one already because the first delve already because it was super easy it was just a case it was literally a few seconds i'll show how i did that in a minute but um it's a really easy route if you want to do it the basic way just go to the end round the corner to the mythic room and you are done if you want to pick up the extra treasures which are dotted around you can then at this point when you get to here pick up these extra ones on the edges if you desire to do so. For the sake of this video, I'll just be going literally straight to the end and round and finished. Now for the team itself, there's a couple of different things you can do with this and you can switch it around a little bit. What I've done, I've gone for a really simple team that's low level, requires no mythics whatsoever and is very, very straightforward to use. It's based around Rowan. She deals uh, Scatter damage boosted by her armor, so the higher her armor is, the more damage she does. And she's also uh, elemental, which requires 12 mana. And we've got the Mirage Queen here. She gives all elemental allies a 50% start, so Rowan is going to start with 6 out of her required 12 mana. And the Mirage Queen also converts all green gems to Doom Skulls, which we'll be looking out for at the same time. Leprechaun starts battles with full mana. And will explode a load of green gems which is going to charge up Rowan pretty much 9 times out of 10 instantly. And then we just cast Rowan and we win the game straight away. On the first elf it was just literally, I was just like casting Rowan once and it was all over. You can boost her damage output by applying medals. At the beginning if you apply medals of guard that will give plus 8 armor to all allies. And every little bit um, helps on this kind of thing so... Throw three of them on there if um, you think that's going to help you if your Roran is a, a lower level. Now the Shield of Ascaya here is, is here because later on we'll be needing that. We won't be needing it at first because just a single cast of Roran will be enough to wipe out the team. But um, as the levels progress and things get harder, we can use this weapon which is going to then be cast onto Roran and boost her armor considerably. Basically this gives... An ally, as it says, in my case, 48 armor, boosted by all enemy attack. So basically, the higher level the enemy and the bigger their attack, the more armor we get boosted onto Rowan. So it makes her more and more powerful by the enemy being more powerful, which is really, really handy. Now, if you don't have the Shield of Ascaya, what I would recommend instead is putting on something like um, Golden Cog. I think it's called. Let me just check this. I think it's called Golden Cog. We'll have the same-ish kind of effect. won't be as good, but um, if you get it on nice and early then um, it will be helpful. Give armor to an ally equal to their current armor. So yeah, that would give a decent effect as well. And it's using red and yellow, so not actually blocking any of the colors at all. If you don't have that, then I would just throw on something like Mountain Crusher, which is going to charge her up nicely and quickly. And we don't need a load of different charges now. So I would then probably replace a Lepre Leprechaun with a second Rowan. So we get double the effect of them doing all that damage. Another little twist on this, if you like, you just want to be a little bit different. Um, you can chuck in a King Gobtruffle there if you get bored of using Rowan because for all these teams, because Rowan is so handy for these kind of teams, it's just so easy to just go to Rowan. Every single time, you can chuck a couple of King, King Gobtruffles in there instead. King Gobtruffle where Rowan is and where Leprechaun is, say, for example, because we're still going to get a 50% start from the Mirage Queen because King Gobtruffle is a elemental as well. But on the later levels, it's not going to be quite as fast because the damage output is going to slow down as the enemy increases. But um, it should still be effective. 
What you can do as well, if you so desire later on, is change the class to something like Titan. We started in Archer at the moment because we get a 50% start with mana, which is good. We get a 15% chance for skull damage to be lethal. And the main talent trees we want to look out for are Root Trap. Entangling the first enemy at the start is always handy. Nature's Aura gives us a nice boost on green, which is the main colour we want for this delve. All green allies gain 5 armour, really handy, just gives Varan a little boost as well. And the other ones aren't so, so important, but um, yeah, the main ones are certainly the ones here. If you don't have Archer on 100, you can change to Warden, and that will give you a very, very similar set of bonuses. All allies gain 5 armor is handy for Rowan, and this has a very similar set along, you know, things like Root Trap, Nature's Aura, the Wall of Vines. So if you don't have Archer on a high level yet, then you can stick it onto, onto a Warden and still have a uh, decent set of champion talents there. As the Delvers get harder, what you can also do is change to Titan. Because the reason for this is you still get a 50% start. Um, but the main benefit of this is you get things like, you get extra protection basically, like rock solid, gain a barrier when matching brown gems. Um, stone mastery, gain bonus brown when matching brown gems. This is really, really handy because when you get to the point where you need to cast Shield of Eskaya onto Rowan once, this means you're going to get there quicker by using Titan. Right, so enough waffling and explaining stuff. Let's actually get on with it and have a scrap. I'd say with our bonuses on colour, I forgot to show the banner. It was anyway, it was plus two green, plus one brown, minus one red, whichever one that is. I think it's the um, Gobtruffle, Amiranthiax, whatever it's called, Kingdom. So, like I say, you can be casting Rowan. Typically, that wasn't enough to get her going, and for the first time in about like 50 of these things, and then you cast her and it's done. The benefit of having the plus two green is where Leprechaun gets bonus green, it means you've only got a single, get a single green match to get Rowan charged up. Just, it doesn't even have to be a mana surge, just a, if you want to just get a single green match, that'll work at the same time. You don't need to cast Leprechaun if you don't want to. Like, if I get this, that's enough. You can then, then cast that. That gets the job done. And then you can cast Leprechaun on the uh, second round. which will get everybody charged up. Single green match will always be enough with this setup. Now they got a, a rebirth. So now we can cast that and get Rowan charged up again and get rid of that one. Next one. This is the second delve already. I did already do the first one. The first entire one was really, really straightforward and super easy. Didn't get enough there. That's annoying. Bring that down so I can collect the blue next time. Like so, I didn't actually pick up the uh, potion of enchantment from the tier one. Yeah, but if you did, then obviously that would have already been fully charged up. This is, at the moment, of course, with no potions whatsoever. Draw Rowan is a lower level than me. Obviously, you'll be doing a little bit less damage at first. So you may have to cast her twice sometimes, where I'm only have to cast her once. And... The point where you need to um, cast the Shield of Eskaya onto her may change, basically, because obviously everyone's level is different, but this is still going to be an all-round really, really good team for getting this done quickly. Shall I go to the shop quick? Yeah, I'll show the effect of picking up the Tier 1. This isn't going to make a lot of difference, really, um, at this stage of the game. Because Robang gets charged so fast anyway, but... When it comes to getting the Shield of the Sky charged up nice and quickly, then this is going to benefit that for when you need to cast that onto a Rowan. So just 
wiping through these delves really, really quickly and easy, easily at the moment. And as I said, if you don't have the Shield of Eskaya, you can use Golden Cog, but cast that as quickly as you can onto Rowan because basically her armor is increased by her current armor. So if she gets hit by anything which takes away life, then that is going to reduce the benefit of that. No need to cast Let's Form when we've got a single green match, we just automatically get the required amount. And it's super quick and super easy. No Mythics required. Mirage Queen is the only legendary and she's available from the Underworld and the Sunken Fleet if you've not got her already. Pretty easy to get. Alright, I'll just do a couple more because um, then I start thinking about Guild Wars. It's uh, Guild Wars as we started again today. And it's Green Day, so I'll be recording that battle later on. Get out of it. Aha, so we have some survivors now. So now we can um, look out for things like green to skulls. Not too worried about the damage they're going to cause at the moment, but things have started slowing down now, so I can show the theory now upon when you cast Shield of Askaya. So basically now what we're going to do is cast a single cast of Shield of Askaya onto Rowan before we cast her, and that's going to boost her damage output considerably and then wipe out the opposition in a single turn still. Alright, so right now if I press that button, we can see Rowan's standard output is boosted by plus 282. So that is quite a lot, but because the total of the armor and life on the enemy is above 282, then we're not going to kill them in one go. So what we need to do is put the Shield of Eskaya onto Roban first, like that. Now we take a look at our damage output, and it's now boosted by plus 484, which is enough to kill them in one go. Fish bash bosh. See you later. All right, so that is the theory and team I'm using for this delve. Really quick, really easy. I know it's a Roan team again, but... um. Sometimes it's just the quickest and easiest teams which get the job done and for me a Rowan team is the one that does it again. So there's a video if you enjoyed it or found it helpful be cool if you liked and subscribed if you've not done so already. Most of all thanks for watching. See you soon at Guild Wars. Bye for now.